Today, I'm tackling a project that has bothered us since the day we moved into this house. This sliding glass door is original, installed in 1979. It's aluminum, single pane, and extremely inefficient. You can see that the locking mechanism on the frame was broken at some point, and the old plastic handle recently broke off in my hand. That's not gonna work. But probably the most annoying feature is this lovely sound the door makes every single time we open and close it. Ouch. The door replacement really is a pretty easy process, so let me show you how I did it. The first thing I need to do is cut the caulk line and remove the outside trim. I used a box blade and I scored a line on the caulk joint on all three sides. And while I was at it, I went ahead and cut the caulk line around the inside of the door as well. Most likely, your trim is nailed on and easily removed with some pry tools, but mine is covered with vinyl and someone went way overboard by attaching it with these huge security screws, which can only be unscrewed with this special Torx tool. This took a minute, but I worked my way around and got them all removed until I accidentally dropped the Torx tool into a deep hole. Uh, I just lost my Torx down in the hole of death. I can barely see it. Let's see if I can get it out. Thankfully, I found a big magnet in my garage. Come on, come on, little buddy. Which saved the tool and the day. Oh my God. Ah. Now I can use my pry tools and remove this trim. Keep in mind that you may want to reuse your trim on your new door. And if so, carefully remove it. I'm gonna replace mine with wood, so I'm totally fine with it getting busted in the removal process. And here I took a quick time out and decided to go ahead and remove the sliding portion of the glass doors to minimize any chance of us breaking that old untempered glass. I still had one more layer of trim to remove, which was unusual, but easy to do. And here you can see that after removing the trim, we can finally see the flange, which is what holds the door to the house frame. I grabbed my hammer and my pry bar and I removed the nails holding the flange to the house frame. And finally time to remove the door. Ours was super tight, so we very slowly wiggled the frame free, being careful not to break the remaining glass. This project temporarily leaves a big hole in your house, so you wanna make sure and get started early to get this done in one day. I need to close up a little bit of difference on the opening to make the new door flush with the siding and also make the opening a tiny bit smaller for the new door. So I'm just adding some wood that I'm screwing to the house framing. Many people don't have to do this, but the process is really simple if you do. Again, I'm just adding wood to the house framing to fit the new door. My door is under a deep porch and won't see much weather, but as a precaution, let's apply the correct waterproofing protection. And this is super simple. I took some flashing tape and I taped both sides, folding it in around the corner. And then I taped the top, overlapping the side tape. I've linked the tape and all of the other supplies for you down below. I'm not taping the bottom because it's concrete, but if you have a wooden sill, be sure to add flashing there too. I have a video on installing my front door that covers waterproofing a wooden sill if you'd like to see that process. I'll link it down in this video's description. And now let's prep the door. I added a thick continuous bead of caulking along the backside of the nail flange to seal the joint. I also added construction adhesive on the concrete bottom to set the door and keep water and bugs out. And finally, we could set the door into the center of the frame, tight to the nailing flange. I made sure that the door was level and that there was an even gap on each side of the frame. If your door is out of level, an easy fix for this is just to add shims where necessary. Now the door can be attached with a few corner screws. An easy way to make sure the door is square is to measure diagonally from corner to corner. You should get the same measurement each way. Next, I made sure the sides of the door were plumb, which is easy as the sides of the frame are flexible. I also made sure the frame had an even gap at the opening between the door and the frame from top to bottom. For insulating and air sealing the gaps, I grabbed a low expansion foam. This will insulate with low pressure without swelling the door frame and kicking it out of square. And lastly, you can turn the screws at the bottom of the door clockwise, which pushes down the wheels and raises the door to increase how well it slides. For the outside, instead of adding back vinyl trim, I'm gonna level up with cedar. 
just like I did on the front door install. I absolutely love how cedar adds warmth and dimension to the outside of our house. And then I really leveled up on the inside and trimmed it out with white oak. And for the last time ever, here's the old door. And here is the new. And listen to this door seal. Much more efficient. This is a door we use every single day. And now knowing how much we love the new one, I can't believe we've waited so long to tackle this project. I completed the install in one day. It wasn't hard and it's such an upgrade from the old terrible door. And adding the gorgeous custom trims on the inside and the outside really take this door from good to great. If you have a sliding door install on your to-do list, I hope this helps you know that you can do this too. If you have any questions, please leave them below and don't forget to subscribe because a lot more is coming. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next project.